So we've got a question here. Duran Rider, you are the Dan Bilzerian of the vegan movement. How many women have you slept with? You are a womanizer. What's the deal? How many women have you slept with a Duran Rider? And these are sort of questions I get on my Tumblr and my Instagram. and it, I even have people create fake accounts in my name and try and start up banter and all sorts. It just, just, you know, just troll troll life. But this is me, so my voice, you recognize it. How many women have I slept with? Let's talk about, uh, let's divert the question a little bit. The answer would be a lot. I've lost count, to be honest. I've lost count. I, I, I wouldn't be able, to, be able to say a number. It would be a lot. And uh, people say, why would you even talk about this? I just want to let people know. Um, I've got a relationship ebook coming out shortly, and I uh, talk a lot about relationships, about women, things like that. I was a bit of a late bloomer to the dating game. I was a virgin until I was about, I think it was about 21 or something like that. And uh, so I was, I was one of those guys in high school who was a bit shy and, you know, not athletic. I was always sick and asthmatic and things like that. So I, was, I wasn't, you know, I had no status. I had no money. And looks-wise, I was just, you know, pretty run-of-the-mill sort of guy. And uh, what women love, women love these three things primarily. What gets me excited is status, money, looks, in that order. And for men, it's looks, looks, and looks. Men are very basic like that. Women are very basic as well. Men and women are very, very basic. Very, very basic. This is a general rule. There are some exceptions here and there, depending on the hormonal cycle of the woman, etc. If she's ovulating, etc. Her luteal phase, etc. But in general, women love status, money, and looks is third. All right, so... I came into status with social media, with YouTube, and with a niche community of the vegan world. And uh, man, I, I lived a rock star lifestyle for a while there when I was single. It was uh, it was insane. It was out of hand. It got me in a lot of trouble <laughs> with a couple of boyfriends who eventually found out what me and their girlfriend uh, had done in bedroom in Chiang Mai, one of them. And uh, yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, people, you probably just Google my name up and see those videos come up. I basically got a, a Norwegian stalker, uh, a Norwegian stalker out there who has made about 130 videos. He's made documentaries about me because me and his uh, girlfriend Hannah from New Zealand had a, a right old fuck fest there in Chiang Mai, Thailand, back in October 2015, where basically, like I said, I'll give you an ebook shout out, and uh, she she basically <laughs> sucked me dry. And uh, gave me a you know a, a kiwi a kiwi saw pelvis to, so to speak, but uh, it was all consensual. She, we had great emails afterwards. She wanted to come to Adelaide. Uh, we clicked in in the bedroom for sure. She wanted to come to Adelaide. There's plenty of emails and screenshots she sent me afterwards. It's all online if you if you want about it. But anyway, he found out. He found out about it. And how did he? What happened is he asked her, Hannah, did you fuck Harley's brains out? I suspect you did. And she says, no, Michael, no, I did not. I did no such thing, do a such a thing. <laughs> so that they lived that little reality there for about a, about a year. And then uh, when me and the banana girl broke up, uh, we had a bit of a on, on, online tussle there. So we, me and Freely made some, some big mistakes there, tussling online. That's very bad for our brand images, very, very silly for both of us. But anyway, so Freely, understandably feeling hurt that I'd plowed the field when we broke up just basically you know name names of who I hooked up with and that, that that right there taught me that women do not want the truth women want their feelings protected all right so by being honest with my ex-girlfriend thinking I was doing the right thing just being honest and upfront that totally broke her heart she felt massively rejected and she basically wanted me wanted me uh, put in a blender <laughs> but so to speak so she just named and shamed and then uh, old mate Michael from Norway found out and he's like what I thought you said nothing up, and she's like, um, well, <laughs> and so Michael wrote to me, and so I said, well, if you think it isn't true, then why don't you go and ask Freely, go and ask uh, Johnny and Michelle, and go and, and I, basically, I started sending all these screenshots and emails, and this guy could not handle it, he could not handle it, and I'm like, bro, if you really think it's true, go to the police, let's go to the police station then, if you think it's, it wasn't consensual, but he didn't want to do that, but what he did, though, is he started making these videos about me. And so I learned a lot about beta boys like him, uh, sneaky women like Hannah, who just want to their way around, and that's totally fine. I'm not shaming that at all. That's just the reality. You know, people, women want a slick part of the deal. It's, it's just, it's just, 
red-blooded male, red-blooded female sort of behavior. And so basically by having status, having money, all of a sudden I was like put on this pedestal by, you know, thousands of women around the world. And I'm not making this video to say, hey, look at me, blah, blah, blah. I'm just making this video to, to help guys understand and women understand, you know, human behavior. You know, most guys in my position would have gone, you know, would have really got to the head and gone a bit crazy. And uh, I definitely went a bit crazy there, but having a vasectomy and, you know, having threesomes and all sorts of... I've got to say, Kiwi girls, Kiwi girls are uh, an English women. English women, <laughs> there's sun going on there in the, in the water in Kiwi land and in England. Some of those, some of those uh, voraciousness. And that, I'm not complaining at all, just saying. Uh, but I, I highly, I highly, highly doubt that my friend from Norway, Michael, my good buddy from Norway, Michael, I highly doubt that Hannah gives him what she gave me. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt there's something about when you have status and a woman thinks she's going to become the next freely or superstar or whatever, she will give to you like she's never given to anyone else. She will just, she will go deep and uh, not many guys really understand that and that's just the way women are. Just like a man, if he's really attracted to a woman, will just go next level, you know, to, to get her attention or do things for her, etc, etc. That's just human nature and there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's like a spider spins a web, a cat pounces on a mouse, a bird flaps its wings, a penguin swims. It's just, it's nature, it's just part of the deal. But a lot of guys can't handle that. They're like, yeah, what, my girlfriend fucked the, the tennis star or the fucking YouTube celebrity or the the, 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 the district manager at work, you know, when she was drunk. It's just, it happens, man. It happens. So, if you're going to freak out about that, then, you know, what I mean? it's just, that's just part of the deal. I mean... You know, obviously it doesn't happen to, to everybody. Of course it doesn't. But it does happen, all right? And it's totally understandable. Women are run by their emotions. Men are run by their hormones, all right? Simple as that. So, what I've learned as well is in my life is not to let my hormones put me in a spot of bother. Because if you go around, you know, hooking up with a, a Kiwi girl and then she's got a, a beater cuck Norway boyfriend... You know, he can make a little hassles for you online, on internet, and make websites about you, make videos about you, and make your life a little bit more, a bit more irritating than it should be. So, uh, you know, that's the deal there. So that's what I've learned, and I think I'm going to talk more about it in my dating book coming up. It's going to be a game changer. It's going to be a game changer. I've been talking about it for ages, and, uh, you know, I've just been putting it off, putting it off, just getting better screenshots, better information, better stories. I really think there's something powerful about stories. If you, I love listening to stories, and if you like stories, but you, you, you do. Everybody loves stories. Everybody loves stories. Everybody loves stories. It's just, it's just fact. It's just fact. So what women want, what women want in a man, this is for the guys who are still listening. They're like, okay, Harley, you've been gloating, you've been arrogant, you've been talking shit. Tell us, tell, give me something I could actually take home and put my everyday life. Women love status, money, and looks really help as well. But status, money, help, uh, that's, the, that's the biggest aphrodisiac for women, all right? It's simple as that. And so if you've got more status money than her, all of a sudden, poof, her biological clock is just ticking. It's same as well if you're a good-looking guy as well. But you don't really see many good-looking bums on the street having girlfriends. They might get hookups and stuff, but the girls aren't really going to want to stay with them because they're like, yeah, you're going to status and you're getting money. Yeah, you're all right. Well, I'm ovulating, but other than that, I don't want to be around you. So, but status money, not everyone has that. Um, unless you, you know, you're Western income and you go to certain countries in the world, you'll have uh, status and money because you have a passport for a certain country, etc. That's just the way it is. So women there will find you a lot more attractive than the local guys will. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just an, it's just an is thing. So let's forget about status and money. Let's another video. Let's talk about what women want besides that. Status, money, looks, girth, length. All right, let's forget all about that. <laughs> that is also very good things to have but again women doesn't know your length and girth until she feels comfortable enough to be sitting around you in your hotel room in Chiang Mai late at night you're doing your ebook cover and all of a sudden she starts grabbing you up she pulls down your pulls down your little, uh, little uh, Adidas running pants and uh, goes to work goes to work what's going to make her feel really relaxed it's going to be a rapport. It's going to be conversation. If you're feeling tense, if you're feeling awkward, she's going to feel that as well. She's not going to. She's not going to. She's not going to. 
she's not going to orgasm or she's not going to feel really relaxed and sensual. And most women, 99% of women, can only orgasm if they're feeling really comfortable, really relaxed. All right, so if she's feeling a bit tense or judged or awkward or, oh my God, oh my God, she ain't going to come. She ain't going to be that wet. She's not going to have a really memorable experience. You know, it won't be as positive for her. It won't be like a real toe curling, uteral bruising experience. You know, she will uh, just be like, oh, really, that happened? Okay, I can forget about that one. But I remember this girl, Hannah, uh, saying to me afterwards, she's like, that's the first time I've ever orgasmed by penetration. And I was like, okay. I wasn't sure if she just says that to all the guys. Maybe she said it to Michael as well. But she basically said that. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, tell me more. She's like, I just feel... I just feel so comfortable around you, Harley. You know, you're, you're like my idol. You know, blah, 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 blah. I think we can make good things together. You know, come, can I come back to Adelaide? And so she saw me as a, a long-term proposition, and I think I brushed it off pretty quickly. And that, that's a big mistake there is I, I sort of brushed her off thinking, okay, she's fallen too quick. It's just the first night. And uh, I'm not sure what I said. I think I was, so I've, got to, I've got to ride in the morning. She'll probably go home. So th- that's, that's a really, really bad thing. And I gave her a pump. <laughs> I walked her out of the hotel room, and I gave her a pump. And she took the pump back to her hotel uh, where she was staying in her apartment block and uh, with staying with Tanner and Michelle and Johnny from New Zealand, etc. And they're like, oh, you got a, you got a good pump from doing right of there. She's like, haha, yeah, yeah. And um, the next day she put up a YouTube video showing a hickey on her neck and bragging about that. So again, these are things that our friend Michael has sort of left out of, the, uh, left out of his documentary series. But he should probably put them in, apart from going to the police station with me. But that will never happen. So that's the deal. So a woman... You know, if you want her to have a good experience, she has to. It could be your wife, it could be your your girlfriend, it could be anyone. You know, it could be the first date, it could be your Tinder hookup, whatever. She, she's not feeling comfortable, guys. You know, what I mean, women need more time to rev up, and she that that could be meaning all day foreplay. It could be meaning text talk. It could be meaning sex talk. It could be just how you behave. You know, a lot guys often take ten seconds to get ready. A woman, you know, you might go, hang on, up. Oh, I remember hooking up this chick, and she was just ready to roll. It's like, yeah, well, it took her a while to get all juiced up. You know. It took the, the, the conversation you had the day before, then that morning, and then that day, and then the massage, and they built up to that. You know, she didn't just like, didn't just happen. You know, it didn't just happen. You know, women need a reason. Guys just need a spot, a place. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to build, build it up, build it up. These are things most guys oh, don't know, but should know. And I guess, I'll be honest, I didn't know when I was 21 about this stuff. I was just like, oh, you got to be like Tom Cruise or something. So that's the deal. Uh, ebook coming out. And uh, that's just going to be a game changer. Basically, written it for my you know, twenty-one-year-old virgin self, um, or any any guy, any level. Any you might be a full-on fuckboy player, but you think I want to have a good quality relationship. You know, how can I meet my needs, and my lady? And yeah, then this will this will. Uh, you might be a really good fuckboy, but you might be a bad alpha. You might be a bad provider. You might be a bad boyfriend. You might be a bad friend. You, know, you might be a bad coach or mentor, but you might be a really good fuckboy. You know. Um, so, you, but you, if you don't meet the six needs, she'll soon get bored of that. And if you want to keep her on on board, then uh, you know, and not just keep her on board, but like have her, have her, in, having a good lifetime, a good fun. But beware, beware! If a woman feels rejected, then she will make your life incredibly, incredibly difficult. Depending on how psycho she is, and uh, depending on how psycho she is. But hey, crazy in the head, crazy in bed. So you can't have one without the other. Got all these guys are like, oh, my girlfriend's boring. It's like, well, she's probably sane. And the guys are like, I mean, this girl was really good in bed, but she's crazy in the head. And it's like, well, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. That's how it goes, bro. <laughs> look at my life. You know, look at my life. Um, that's just how it rolls. And it's just, just understanding that. It's like cats, you know. Cats are like very flaky and flippant. One minute the cat's on your leg, next minute the cat's scratching you and trying to bite you or whatever. Or it's come to food only and then disappears all day. That's just like women. It's, just a, it's not a good thing or bad thing. It just is. It's feminine. It's feminine. It's the flow of nature. You don't fight it. You embrace it. It's like when you go surfing. You time the wave. You swim, you know, with the rip. You don't swim against the rip, all right? There's guys out there trying to swim against the rip and they're drowning in the feminine ocean. And oh, I hate women. I'm going to go big towel. And it's like, oh, you don't get it, man. You don't get it. Swim with the rip. Let the rip take you out. Swim across it. Don't swim against it. The rip will always win. Ew, if you win, you'll be very tired trying to get out of it. But most likely, you'll drown in that sea of feminine confusion. And your life will be a lot harder than it has to be. So there you go, going. I feel extremely qualified in this position. I'm age 42. I've had a lot in my life. I've had a lot of female experiences, and I continue to have that. And I love studying the 
subject, the topic, a personal study, it's a personal passion of mine. It's not just professional, it's personal. I love understanding human communication. I fucking love that. I love that. And uh, there's nothing that gets me more juiced than uh, just understanding how humans tick and, and cracking those codes, etc. And, and sharing that advice and inspiration with other people so they can too have a quality of life that I have. The quality of my life is insane and based on my control of my own emo- control of my own emotions and having just the frame that I live in and no matter what happens I'm gonna be grateful for that day you know no matter what happens be grateful for the day gang and if you don't have that gratitude man you are really really missing out in life you know what I mean really missing out in life you know like I can you know the example could be I can think of uh yeah, to use myself as an example again, I can think of the, all the you know, slander or nasty videos my you know, my friend from Norway, Michael, makes about me. And all, I can flip side that and go, well, man, well, you know, <laughs> the, the, the amount of Dyson mouth that your girlfriend gave me that night, you know, and all the things she told me and spoke in my ear and asked me to do to her, I could focus on that. And that was a pretty pleasurable experience for myself and her. So... You could focus on what the negatives of what someone's doing, or you could focus on the positives of what someone's doing. You know, so you you can spin it. You could, you could, uh, you know, go to the supermarket and someone steals your bike, and you could go, oh, someone stole my bike. This sucks. Or you could go, well, I'm at a supermarket and there's, I've got money. I can buy food. I've got a bike. I can get another one. There's people out there who never have a bike, who can't ride a bike, who never go to a supermarket a day in their life. So, yeah, it sucks. My bike got stolen, but. You know, this is the positives going on right now. So being able to flip it like that, spin it to win it, flip it to hit it, is, uh, you know, just, it's, it's, you know, you can hit it or you can quit it. All right? Hit it or quit it. You got those negative emotions coming up, quit it. Got that good stuff coming on, hit it. Hit and quit. <laughs> there you go. This is a little off the off the cuff video. Bit of a rant, a little bit of a ramble. Put some on my podcast as well. Uh, during Rider Raw Truth. If you have any questions down below, hit me up. How many women have I slept with? It doesn't really matter. Some people would say it's a lot. Some people would say it's nothing. You know, it's uh, what I would. Say, and it's not. A, I'm not. I'm not chasing numbers. All right. This. I mean, maybe I was back in the day chasing numbers. You know, bragging to your mates. But it's not. It's more about having experiences. I'll tell you what, guys. Women do not care how many women you have been with. All they care about is do you have experience or not. All right. Men are totally different. Men care. Well, most men do. If they're a bit beta or you know, they don't want to experience women, but they don't want the, the history that comes with that, that's a bit double standard. But women do not care. They do not care. They want experience. They want passion. They want length and they've got girth. They want girth. So if you've got those, then it's all good. If you don't, if you don't have experience, that's bad. You know, that's that's like really, really bad if you don't have experience. Like this is just like, okay, this guy's got no experience, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He might have length and girth, he might look alright, but he's got no experience. He's oh this is just a dead rot dead this is a dud, I can be at home with my seven inch dildo doing this myself, no risk, you know. So if you have experience, that's that's the bomb. And that's what she's always looking for. Looking for learn, looking to learn how to communicate, what women want, things like that. Many women want different things as well. Right? So just because it worked on one girl doesn't mean necessarily work on the next. May work in a certain way or a certain time of the month, etc. But if she's ovulating or you know, second day period or things, she's going to behave totally different to the same situation. Right? So men got to understand that. You got to understand that. Right? Women are like cats. Don't take it personally. We'll see you on the road. Carb up.